Good morning. I um, wanted to make a little video for you guys to go over 10 rules of photography because I have noticed that some of us are forgetting some of them. I um, have to say, some of the quality of work has not been up to what I expect from you. Um, I expect, honestly, a little bit more creativity from you guys. Um, I know we have a lot of resources in the room when it comes to lighting and things like that, um, but I'm asking you to be innovative and make do with what you have at home. Um, if you don't have a flash, use a lamp, use a flashlight, uh, use a garage light. Think about lighting uh, when you're taking your photos, but also I want you to think about composition. Um, so I'm going to go over the 10 rules of photography presentation that you've all seen before, but I made it look prettier um, because I just feel like maybe we need a little bit of a refresher. Um, it can never hurt. And plus we're gonna move into some new projects. And I think that these things will be helpful for you. And it'll be helpful for you guys to have this video to be able to like keep looking back on. So here we go. Rule number one, rule of thirds. Okay, so Rule of thirds is kind of like training yourself to see this grid when you look through your viewfinder and thinking about your composition broken down into thirds, okay? So you can see this reference image that the dog is the focal point and the focal point is aligned on one third of the composition. And it's just, you don't have to do it all the time, but it is a good composition um, to try out um, in your photos. So the points where the grid intersects, those are good places to put focal points. Um, and you can use this for anything, okay? So rule of thirds. Balancing elements. Balancing elements is one that I feel like I used a weird picture for in the past. And I remember last semester, a lot of people got confused about it. Um, so balancing elements is basically where you have a main focal point. Um, and instead of leaving the whole rest of the composition blank, you're putting something to balance it out visually and carry your eye throughout the whole composition. So I, I found a new picture for this because I thought the old one that I had was a little bit confusing. Um, so um, you don't actually have to balance any objects on top of each other. This is just balancing the objects within the rectangle of the composition, okay? Balancing elements. All right, number three, leading lines. Leading lines could be literal actual lines. So this image that I chose has both actual lines um, and things that are helping lead to a focal point. Okay, so we have the lines on the road, which is like a classic way to do leading lines using the lines on a road, looking down the road. Um, and then we also have the cables, the top of the bridge that are leading to this sunburst, sun flare in the middle, um, which is our focal point. I really liked this image because I liked the use of actual lines and then objects that are leading um, as lines to something, okay? Um, okay, so that's leading lines. It doesn't necessarily have to be an actual line. If you remember back to my old presentation, it has like a lines of flowers going back to a windmill. It could be anything that leads your eye throughout the composition. All right, next one, viewpoint. This is one that I think that you guys have really been lacking in the photos you've been making, um, your, your quarantine series. Um, viewpoint, a lot of times you're just, I feel like you're just like walking in. So, so recently, um, I did one that was four. I did one that was, um, I'm trying to think of all of them. Oh, backyard mystery. Um, there were a lot of opportunities for you to be creative with your composition. Um, and some of you kind of fell flat when it came to the composition. So this is a really easy way, viewpoint, to make your composition more interesting. So I chose two different images to help with this. Um, this one would be what's called a worm's eye view, way down low. Um, this image is way more interesting from down below than it would have been if this person was standing at their regular height. So what I'm asking you to do is contort yourself a little bit. You're taking an image, see what it looks like from really, really down low. See what it looks like from above, um, or even like harsh diagonals to the sides. Um, you want to you want to see what different perspective you can get um, on that 
image that you have in front of you. I mean, that's the beauty of photography. You're seeing something with your eyes. How can you make it look different in your photo? Okay, um, so get low, go up from above, shoot from a diagonal, but capture something different when it comes to your viewpoint. You don't have to be this extreme all the time. It's just something fun to throw into the mix. All right, background. You maybe remember that this one is the most important rule. Um, when we did our 10 rules of photography assignment, um, or when we do our 10 rules of photography assignment, um, you will use this rule of background in every image you take. And every time you look through your viewfinder, you should be looking at everything that's in that rectangle, okay? So if you're looking at the rectangle through the viewfinder, you wanna make sure that nothing in that space is distracting from what you're trying to say with your photo for what you want the viewer to look at with your photo, okay? So um, I did a little do and don't here because I, I felt like it was it, it was helpful, okay? So this don't photo, I just pulled these off of Google, but this don't photo, I don't wanna shame anybody, but you guys do this all the time. Um, this photo is like a real big don't. So this little girl, here she is looking so cute, but she's standing in front of not only a parking lot um, and like a weird angle of houses and garages, but she's standing like directly in front of a speed limit and a no parking sign. Um, and it really takes away from the photo. If the photographer had positioned her a little bit differently, maybe with some greenery in the background or a plain background, um, it would have been a much more um, effective composition. Um, also playing with depth of field, making sure that everything in the background is either blurred if you want it or not blurred, um, is something that helps with the background. So I chose this image as our do image because I felt like the photographer was thinking not only just about their focal point here, which is this cool little lens ball um, where they're reflecting. It looks like a bookshelf. Um, the photographer's thinking about this, but they're also thinking about everything that's around there. They strung up some string lights. Um, and got some really cool bokeh there. That's what these little dots are called, bokeh. Um, so you can see, I mean, obviously this is two different images, but you can see just how much more effective it is when you think about what's in the background. So my least favorite things to see in the background, you guys always do this, even though, even though I tell you, even though I yell at you in the beginning and say, don't do this. Pools, especially pools like above ground pools with the cover on top of it. That's not a good background, guys. I hate to tell you. Um, if it were summer and our in-ground pool was open and we use it as part of, you know, an element in our photo, well, that's a little bit different. But, you know, like the above-ground pool with the pillow in the middle and the, and the cover on top, not a great background. Um, your white PVC fence, I know it, it looks like it would be a good background because it's plain, but it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't read well, okay? So PVC fences, no good. Cars, signs, all that stuff is going to distract. You know, if we were in the classroom right now, I would position myself in front of the fire extinguisher and ask you if that was a good place to take a photo. Um, and the answer would be no, okay? Same thing as when you're in the in the house, you wanna think about what's behind you, okay? Um, what's what's going on in the, in the rest of the rectangle? Nobody wants to see your big pile of laundry on the floor of your room or your messy unmade bed. Um, think about what is in that composition. All right, I'm gonna end my rant on background. Okay, all right, next. Symmetry, pattern, and repetition is pretty self-explanatory, but they are um, really beautiful to see in a composition. The symmetry could be natural symmetry, so that's why I chose this image here with the man in the kayak, because it's not perfect exact symmetry, um, but it still you know, creates that look to your eye. Um, repetition, these bike wheels, really interesting composition. Pattern, okay, those are all pleasing to the eye uh, and interesting things to include in your composition. Okay, pattern, symmetry, and repetition. Depth of field is another favorite of mine. Um, you want to think about your depth of field. Um, you know how to control your aperture setting and that your aperture setting is going to determine the, the, the amount of blur you have in your background. So you wanna be intentional about that. You want to think about your aperture setting. Do I want a blurry background? If the answer is yes, if that is what works for your composition, then you're gonna make sure that you choose the correct setting to achieve that look, okay? Same thing if you're shooting something that you want everything to be in focus, um, then you're going to use a higher aperture number because you want that, that 
that deep depth of field, okay? Um, so that's depth of field. Framing is one of my favorite ones, okay? Um, or it's also called like frame within a frame. Um, and it's just thinking about how you can bring more attention to your focal point through literally putting a frame around it. Um, and it could be anything, a fence. I liked this one with the fence because I thought it was really interesting and, and pretty accessible, right? Um, this one's a mirror um, through the train door. Not, you know, we're not doing that right now, but um, framing is really, really interesting. And I'm sure locked inside your house, you can do lots with this. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see your focal point kind of buttoned up within a frame, it's soothing. Okay, uh, framing. All right, cropping, um, getting up close and personal with your subjects, having them fill the frame, um, or just thinking about how you can creatively leave something out of your composition to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so obviously we know there's more to the Statue of Liberty, but this photographer um, cropped it here because they wanted to really bring attention to this focal point. If they had made this a bigger image of the full Statue of Liberty, they maybe wouldn't have had the impact of these clouds up here in the corner. Um, so creative cropping, thinking about what you're leaving out, um, and if it's unnecessary, you don't need it, right? So creative cropping. And then the last one is experimentation, which is what I really am not seeing from you guys right now. Um, I think that's why I've been a little bit disappointed because I feel like you're at home, you have all the time in the world, maybe you're doing a lot of assignments, um, but I feel like this should be your creative outlet, um, and this should be the time where you're really getting creative. You also have a captive audience, your family, um, who you can kind of get them on board to help you out with things. So it's time to be creative. All these um, quarantine series images that I'm having you guys do, um, I wanna see creativity. So I, I liked this image because I thought it was interesting and I thought it was pretty accessible for us. This is done with a sparkler. You're not going to use a sparkler. But um, you can do this same kind of thing with a flashlight. You guys know how to do light painting. So like all those backyard mystery images, I think you could have done such cool things with some light painting. Um, there was not a lot of mystery in most of your backyard mystery images, which was interesting to me. So make sure you're like really pulling from your creativity here. I know that you can do it. Um, I just think that we're, you know, we're at home and we're in our sweats and we're, we're getting a little lazy here. Um, but and since we're going to be in this for the long haul, I, I need a little bit more from you. Um, especially because I already know um, all of you and I know what you're capable of. So, um, all right, guys. So that's really it. Um, just a refresher on 10 rules of photography. This is important. This is stuff that I, I did the first week of photo one and see here we are the last quarter of photo two and we're still talking about it. It's because these are things that as a photographer, you're always going to use. I've been shooting, I've been taking pictures for 15 plus years and I'm still thinking about all of these things every time I take a picture. Thinking about these things Maybe not so, you know, perfectly and in order, um, but thinking about these things when you are taking a photo, it will become self subconscious to you, um, and you'll think about it, and it will make you a better photographer. Um, I promise. Okay. All right. So there's your refresher. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, all right. Take care.